I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. Welcome to The Legal Fix, a new age radio show brought to you by The Tough Law Firm. We're the toughest law firm in town, with the toughest lawyers around answering your toughest legal questions. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to The Legal Fix. I'm your host, Bruce Tuff. Where we ask the toughest questions. Got him. Hey, got him. Hey, I'm here with my co host. I got Boy Wonder, Jeremy Hall. Whoa, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. whoa what would happen? Oh, oh, oh. Taking after oh. Honey Badger. My name ain't Jeremy. Oh. G.I. Jerome is over there. Oh. oh, my God. I got so excited. <laughs> you got both of them. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let's start with G.I. Jerome. Uh, he's our uh, super lawyer. We got Boy Wonder, Brandon Riley here, and we have a special guest in the house. We have a, uh, a real estate genius, Michael Bolts. Hey, Michael, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Back to you. Back to you. So, you know, the specialty in our show is asking the tough legal questions. So, Michael, we're going to be asking you some tough legal questions like we asked of each other. You guys got any tough legal questions? I have a tough question for him. What is it? Are you related to Usain Bolt? No, he's, he's not enough to be in my family. <laughs> hey, ask a, t- <laughs> ask a tough question. Do you can have you, a follow-up? Can you beat Usain Bolt on a bicycle if you were racing him in a 100-meter dash? If he's, if he's running and you're on a bicycle, yeah, who, who wins? would win? 100-yard dash. Who wins? You on a bike versus Usain Bolt. Well, let's see. How much of a start do I get? No, block start. You gotta go. You can make. I was gonna give him fifty yards. Yeah. You could push like this. Yards. You could push a little bit, you know, and just get a little push. A little you think yeah. you could beat him? I don't think I could beat him. No. Hey, is it a hundred no. yards or a hundred meters now? I forgot. Is anybody watching meters. the Olympics? Is it a hundred meters? meters? That's what I said. So I said a hundred meters. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so on today's show, we're going to be talking about uh, real estate, landlord-tenant. I think that's going to be the hottest topic for everybody is landlord-tenant law because that's in the front page of the news now and about the expiration of the order for the moratorium on uh, on those renters that are out there. Also, the landlord will be asking uh, Michael your tough legal questions on the legal fix. So if you want to call in, call in. We'll put you in the queue. Also, I've had people ask me, hey, how come you always talk about the honey badger? Who the heck is the honey badger? And where is she? Well, the honey badger, we talked about her in our first show. Uh, she's Diana. Uh, Diana Tuff in the office. Okay, now we've sure. now full disclosure. Oh, my God. And she is our greatest critic, by the way. And Diana, story. in fact, the, the latest, we just watched one of the shows on the podcast, and she had a comment about Brandon. She goes, you know, Brandon, not everybody thinks she's funny as you do <laughs> <laughs> and and i said hey, haters gonna hate i said we gotta have the honey badger on the show right Definitely. so i said so i told brandon i said hey don't want let's do this on one of our shows i said let's have the honey badger go so i the invited HBIC. her to be on the show i said come on you be on the show she almost got ready to go on the show after saying i'll never be on your freaking show but then Brandon, he corners me. Yeah, what did you tell welcome. me to do? What did I you told do? you to tell get rid of her. I know. And then I had to come up with some silly-ass excuse for why she couldn't be on the show. That was hell to pay. There was an appeal to be worked on. Yeah, it was. Yeah, what was it? An appeal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we and actually, we have like three or four appeals. We have things going all the In fact, she's working on an appeal with Paula right now in the TCPA, which we've got to have Paula on the show. Okay, Paula's been working yeah, super absolutely. hard. i got to have her on the show. Look, and there they our, are. I think our next show we're going to have her on there. Oh, there's the team. We're in the uh, we're in one of the trial rooms. There's Honey Badger in the That's middle. The HPIC. She's on the on on your left, my right, and uh, there's GI Jerome, uh, Cortland Pettigrew, Vincent Malore. She's there, and there's uh, Boy Wonder, Brandon, and then Megan McCliss. So we're going to have all these folks on our show. I think what we do is. Our next show, let's have the whole office the on the office. show. We'll have everybody come on meet so everybody can meet everybody with the exception of 
Honey Badger. Yeah. Yeah. Honey Badger can't no be on the show. Badger. She'll never be on our we, show. The yeah. audience of England will demand her. You they will so? demand to see you her. Absolutely. So? I, I, don't I can feel the momentum building. I don't think we'll ever I will get audience, her on there. Let us know. Hey, I've got a tough legal question for you, Michael. What are the two biggest phone calls you get about real estate or in your law practice? What are the calls? It's definitely a repair statute and security deposit questions. Okay, landlord tenant stuff, right? Yep. So when you, right. a, when you have a when you have something broke like your faucet or a leak in the ceiling or the water heater or something, that's one of the questions you get. And then how do I get my security deposit back? Right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And who do you represent mainly? More oh. landlords or tenants, or is it a mix between the two? What's your which what's, what's your practice made of? Only the landlords. Okay, a lot of landlords. But yeah. you know the tenant issues. You know how to represent tenants if you had to. Fifty percent of my day is spent with tenant issues. All right, good. And how often are you in court, Michael? Three times a week usually. Three times. Okay. In, what, what's in, the other half of your day spent on? <laughs> figuring out why people didn't have a lawyer when they went to. A, I uh, got a divorce or when they went to a, co a closing or something like that. Not having a lawyer. Yeah. Okay. Niche, niche. Well, we're going to bring, niche what we're going to do is we're going to break and we're going to come back for our second segment. We're going to go ahead and start taking phone calls and we've got a whole set of tough legal questions for Michael. Thank you. We'll see you soon. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. It's time to change. If you like country, we play it. If you like pop, we play it. If you like Latin music, we play it. If you like rock and roll, we play it. Because no one does fusion music like we do. 91.1 FM, The Ball. We all want to protect what we love. And we know that child safety seats and seatbelts save lives. Yet three out of four kids aren't buckled in correctly. And in 2016, 42% of Texas teens who died in crashes weren't wearing a seatbelt. Don't be a statistic. If you love it, click it. That includes you, too. Buckle up. Every rider, every ride. Ask for your favorite songs using WhatsApp. The number 936-900-2381. Hey, welcome back uh, to The Legal Fix. The I'm legal Bruce fix. Tuff. I'm here with Boy Wonder, Brandon the Riley, G.I. Jerome Hall, Boy, I wonder. and uh, Michael Boltz is our real estate expert today. Michael We're talking Boltz. about all your real estate questions. Hey, Michael, when did we first meet? I, I remember, when was it? Chamber? Two, 2004. Yeah. 2004. Where was it? We were, bar oh, not that time. Oh. <laughs> we, we were in a seminar together in, uh, with the uh, Chamber County, I'm sorry, Montgomery County uh, Chamber of Commerce. Right, right. Do you remember, um, now I remember meeting you, and I always take uh, pride in meeting fellow lawyers because I think lawyers, that's uh, one of the best, pe well, they are the best people I know. I love lawyers. And uh, when I met Michael, I know he had just joined the chamber, and I, I wanted to greet him and thank him for joining the chamber. And, you know, ever since then, Michael, we've had a great association. We've referred cases to each other and uh, really enjoyed working with you, and it's been a, a great ride. Tell us a little bit about your background for uh, everybody that wants to know about the Michael Bolts. Uh, you mean lightning bolts with yeah. justice? That Light, lightning bolts with justice. So... Uh, <laughs> I've been in real estate since I got licensed back in uh, 2000, 1975, believe it or not. <laughs> and um, I've been in a partnership a couple of times, but most of the time it's been sole proprietorship. Uh, I'm licensed in a number of states. and uh, What states? Uh, New Mexico and Illinois. And Texas. 
Texas, too. Yeah. I forgot about that. Where's your favorite pra- place to practice law? Texas. Texas. Uh, isn't absolutely. It great? It's free. Man, the home of the free and the brave are right here. No doubt. Yeah. Hey, Michael, if someone wanted to get a hold of you, uh, how would they reach you? Your phone number, website, what's your number? Well, uh, I'm, I operate under Bolt's Law, and uh, our office number is 832-381-3070. And uh, just give me a call, and we'll we'll visit with your issues. Is that you up on the screen? That yeah. handsome guy. Yeah, dude, he looks yeah. just good. like me, Michael. You look That's so awesome good. Time. Yeah, you you look good. Signing a lawsuit, no doubt. So it looks like business law, probate law, real estate law, wills, trusts, and estate planning. You cover a lot of ground, Michael. Well, I, I develop clients, and those clients have interactions. I mean, if they have a business, they have a real estate. If they have real estate, they have wills and probate. So I call debate the same clients over years. I've got one client that I've had for over 30 years, 38 years. That's valuable. Man, uh-huh. to have a client like that, that's the best thing, to maintain yeah, the amazing. client. That's just a testament to you, Michael, and how uh-huh. good of a lawyer you are. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay, so we usually do what we do is we ask tough questions to each other. Jeremy said he had some tough questions he was going to yes. fire off in a lightning round. You want to fire those off? Who are you going to pick on today? G.I. Jerome. Bruce, we're going to start you on the hot seat. No. Carlos. No. Oh. We're going to put one minute on the clock. You're under oath. It's time for the first ever lightning round. Okay. Anything you say can well, It's like me dancing to Bruno Mars right household. here. I like the inner music. Hey, yeah. Okay. Okay. No more delays. On right. Carlos, go. Okay. Name your favorite child. Sydney. Do you believe in absolute truth? Yes. What's your favorite color? Blue. Where'd you go to law school? University of Houston Law Center. Do you believe in the resurrection? Yes. Sum up your life philosophy in a word or phrase. Adventurer, patriot, disruptor. Favorite movie? Uh, Wind and the Lion and Forrest Gump. It's tied. Have you cried in the last year? Yes. Top unchecked bucket list item? Uh, Sail around the world. If you lived in another era, what would it be? Uh, 1800s. What's a better pet? A in Scotland, or a by the way, I wanted to beat England. I would be the guy that would have the revolution. Make that the 1700s. Okay, sorry. Sorry, go, Jeremy, go. Better pet, snake or bat? Uh, bat. Drown I was burn. bit by a bat, by the way. I have raving shots. <laughs> okay. Drown or burn? Drown. One food for life, what would you eat? Steak. Do you have a will? Yes. Do you have a prenup? Uh, no. Damn it. Yeah, I wanted to get one of those. <laughs> I didn't need how one at the time. Will take for you Honey to badger will kill me. <laughs> how, how much money to retire? Uh, at least uh, three million. Republican right. or Democrat? Uh, Republican. Who's okay. smarter, you or Honey Badger? Uh, she is. She's wicked smart. <laughs> wicked smart. Honey <laughs> nice. Wicked smart. Okay. Thank Bruce you. survived. How do? How do Bruce survived. That was Excellent. Good, actually. Excellent. Ooh, ooh, that's a tough one. Okay. Future guest, beware. Okay, maybe let's do this. Let's do one, two, three legal, I mean, uh, um, questions, fire round questions, just three. I'll one, two, three to right. Michael Bolts. Okay, Michael, you saw what happened. Get ready for this, okay? Oh, my right, God. Here, yeah. no. <laughs> we may do six. We'll see. All right, I'll start. Ready? What's your sun sign? Pisces. Favorite job other than practicing law? Teaching. Fastest you've ever gone in a car? 130. Uh, girlfriend's Texas? name. Me, 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 me. I refuse to answer. The grounds on my kill get killed. Republican or Democrat? Independent. Worst purchase ever. Hmm. Man, I made so many of those. Um. Uh, I have to. I don't know. I, I just can't think Mine's of one. Car. Mine's a car. The worst purchase is a car. Like you got to no. have it. The worst buying Which experience car? you ever have is a car. Okay? I mean, it's always, it's never been my best. It's always been my worst. Okay? So what's your favorite car? My favorite car is a my Toyota. My Toyota Avalon. I love that car. Yeah, that's a great mm. car. Yeah, I've driven, nice I've driven nice. a Toyota Avalon. We were talking no. about cars on the way over here. I picked Michael up from the office and drove him over here. Yeah. Okay, is that it? You guys got any more? Huh? You got any more? What yeah. do you use in your hair? Nothing. Nice. <laughs> Al natural. Yeah. I love these tough questions. Mm. Okay, so here's a, the show is about real estate. Michael Boltz is our guest, and um, we're going to have some callers call in. But, Michael, tell us a little bit about your toughest real estate uh, case that you handled. 
Hmm. Well, uh, oh, wait, wait, I hear a caller. Yeah, I got a caller. Hold, wait, hold, hold the thought. Answer. Hold the thought. Hold We've got answer. a caller. All right. Uh, welcome, caller. Welcome to the Legal Fix. Welcome to the Legal Fix. Yes, yeah, state your name. Uh, I'm Mindy. 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 How are you, Mindy? How are you doing today? Good, Welcome to I'm the Legal excited. Fix. Okay, you're excited. I know everybody's excited to be on the show. I need some help. You do need some help. Well, okay, tell me what your question is. What do you need? So, I live with my son and my mother. Right. And I, my landlord is trying to evict me. Um, and I don't think he can evict me because of COVID, but I haven't paid rent since last November. Uh, okay. All right. So you're, you don't, you haven't paid rent since November. Why haven't you paid rent, Mindy? Tell us. Why haven't you paid? Um, well, I got, I don't have a job anymore. Where were you working? I was a dancer. Dancer. A dancer. Oh. Exhibited. Where? Yeah, that's important. That's probably our most important question for you today. Where? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. All right, so you're not working. You're yeah. living with your mom and your son. You haven't been paying rent since November, and you're unemployed. And so your question is what? It's a brutal sum up. Yeah. Is that it? Is that pretty good or not? Did I get no, it that's all? good. Okay. Her name Tell is Mindy. Mindy. What did I say? <laughs> all right. So what's what? your question, Mindy? Can they evict me even though I haven't paid rent? Isn't there a great period? Well, first of all, your first step is to file a CDC declaration. You can go online and download it. It's a, a page, two pages. You don't need to authorize it. Deliver it to your landlord, hopefully with a, with a letter, but some proof of, of service. And then the landlord cannot evict you for non-payment of rent. However, it doesn't cover other grounds for eviction. And so if that's the only ground the landlord has, then they can't evict you. But if you've uh, had unauthorized pets, if you've had uh, unauthorized, uh, if you violated a homeowners association rule or some other violation of your lease, they can seek you. You gone. You're out of there. Yeah, niche, niche. So, Michael, so you could still have uh, protection under the I, CDC oh, guidelines. We, you could still have protection then. You apply for this, and then so Mindy could mm -hmm. be protected, right? Well, until June 30th, unless the government uh, extends it to September 30th, which is under discussion. Okay. Wow. Um, That's like tomorrow, though. Yeah, it's right. it's, it's immediate. This, this end of this month. This but uh, the other thing I would recommend, though, that you seek uh, compensate help from. Uh, there's a thirty six million dollars have been granted to the state of Texas uh, to help tenants pay rent. So I would help seek help through four or five different agencies. Okay. Okay. That's good. gold right there. That's yeah, great advice. That's, a, that's to excellent. Tenants facing eviction. Mindy, that's did that help you out any? So get your CDC application form, fill that out, and you can apply for some protection and get back to work. Yes, dancing awesome. back to work. That sounds good. Thank you. Hey, thank you for calling the That's legal fix. Amazing. We and appreciate by, it. By Bye. the way, there's terrible consequences if the landlord doesn't ab abide by that CDC declaration. What so, happens? <clears throat> well, they're subject to a hundred thousand dollar fine. They're subject to a criminal. Uh, actions that has to be filed through the Department of Justice, however, but there are big consequences if they don't abide by the CDC declaration. Okay, well, that's good. Stuff. That's good to know, Michael. Um, so does um, any anything else that someone might want to know being a tenant in a situation where they can't they can be evicted for violating their lease like say if they have someone who's not on the lease or if they violate some term or provision of the lease i noticed that there was if you had someone who had been convicted in a, of a felony and they were residing in your premises or something like that is that is that am i off on that or is that uh, an eviction that can happen against a, a tenant yeah we you know, given the COVID, since I represent landlords, we always file under different grounds other than non-payment of rent. We'll, for example, uh, non-renew a lease that's coming to an end and then seek uh, recovery as a holdover 
and and a COVID declaration doesn't protect that tenant whatsoever. Uh, if they're running a business in a subdivision that prohibits running a business, we we can see grounds for violating non-residential activity of a of a leasehold. So there's many many grounds other than non-payment. Okay, so the 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 key is the lease agreement in itself and the terms and conditions of that lease agreement, whether it's expired or not. So that all has a major consideration in whether a tenant still can occupy a premises or not. Okay, well, thank you. That'll complete our second segment. And uh, remember, if you have any real estate questions, you can contact uh, Michael Bolts. Michael, what's your phone number again? 832-381-3070. Okay. B-O-L-T-Z law.com. Yay. All right. All right. We'll be back. Thank you. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. Hey, welcome back to the Legal Fist. Fix, fix, fix. <laughs> the Legal Fist. Hey, I'm your host, Bruce Tuff. I'm here with Boy Wonder, Brandon Riley, and G.I. Uh, Jerome Hall. And we have our special guest, Michael Boltz, who's asking all the tough legal questions. And he's asking, he's answering your questions about real estate law. We've been talking a little bit about landlord-tenant law. And then on the break, we were talking about uh, the contracts that you have for uh leasing an apartment leasing a house uh it's a uh, standard trek form i don't even know what trek means what does trek mean jake what does that mean michael texas real estate commission all right texas real estate Commission. i actually knew that that was just one of my setup questions <laughs> i know everything actually so um this uh, contract we have up on the screen tell me a little bit about that michael what is that used for <clears throat> okay it uh there's many provisions in the uh, Texas, the I'm sorry, landlord tenant law that require a document to be in writing to be able to take advantage of the provisions of the law. Otherwise, you're subject to common law. And so uh, in the landlord tenant law, let's first look at paragraph four, which is the renewal. Uh, very few people pay attention to that. If you have a one-year contract uh, and no one does anything, pursuant to paragraph four, you end up in a month-to-month -month agreement, and that month-to-month -month agreement goes infinitum. And so the way you, if you're a landlord or a tenant, the way to get out of the liability, because if you're a tenant, you don't want to be subject to more rent, you have to send a 30-day advance notice that you're terminating it. Or if you're a landlord and you want to get rid of a tenant, you have to send that 30-day notice of, of non-renewal. Now, the interesting part, one of the interesting parts about that is we'll talk about security deposits. And if a landlord doesn't return the security deposit within 30 days of getting notice of their leaving with an itemized list of deductions, they're subject to very punitive uh, penalties. However, if the, if the tenant was required to give advance notice and they didn't, then that ends up being a defense for violation of the security deposit law. And so the, the paragraph four is the condition of returning the security deposit and uh, you have to fulfill that. So it's a, a small area, but it's very useful in, in most security deposit cases. And is that what we have up there on the screen? Michael, Section 10, the security deposit? Yeah, Section 10. And uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the requirement, again, is that within 30 days of receiving the advance, uh, the forwarding address of the tenant where they can get their security deposit, the landlord has to submit an itemized list of the deductions showing the monies from the security deposit that are being withheld. A security deposit's interesting in that it's uh, not the landlord's money. It's an advance payment. 
And so it belongs to the tenant. So if the landlord doesn't return that money, then that's what subjects them to liability. Most landlords stick a security deposit in, in the bank and think it's, you know, Found their money. money. It's not a deposit. It's an advance payment to secure payment of the lease. So it's really important uh, of, to read your lease agreement and abide by the terms and conditions of the security deposit. Michael, what happens when you don't have a written lease? How do you, do you are there rules or something that regulates uh, landlords and tenants if you don't have a lease? Yeah, then, then you're subject to section, section 91, which requires the landlord to make a good faith to replace you as a tenant, when you leave, you're subject to uh, um, the, the statutory provisions in chapter section 92, which is the landlord law. So the state has written, written your lease. That's in the property code, Texas property code 91 and 92. So that yeah. actually, there you can actually have a lease without having a lease because it's statutorily prescribed in section 92 and 91 of the Texas property code. Yeah, the code. state wrote your lease for you. Is it pretty fair to do that? Which better, the written lease or the, the state code lease in 92? It, if you, it depends upon who you are, but uh, it's obviously better for the landlord because there are certain provisions that you can't, that you can't exercise unless they're in writing, underscored, and in bold print. And if they're not in the lease, then you can't take advantage of those those protections. All right. All right. You you had mentioned been at the beginning of the show there were two things that you get the most calls on. So, uh, security deposit was one of them. What was the other one? Uh, repair statute. All right. Tell me about the repair statute. What is what does that entail? Well, the Texas legislature uh, under six, chapter B of section ninety two wrote what we call the re, uh, repair statute. And that sets out all the rules for uh, making repairs. If you think about it, a tenant gets into, goes and looks at a property, wants to rent it. The landlord's under an obligation to make repairs to keep that leasehold the same way it was when they moved in. If the landlord doesn't make those repairs, the tenant has recourse against them. Um, and so um, that's where I come into, you know, get involved so much because the, the tenant uh, seeking penalties. Now, the two defenses of a landlord are always great in the sense of the landlord is that one, if the tenant's behind in rent, there's no obligation to make repairs. There's no obligation uh, to even give a security deposit. The second thing is if the tenant causes the damage or his occupants, that's a defense to any any violation of the repair statute. You know, my daughter went through that in Austin. They actually, during the freeze, so the gas was cut off. They had no access to heat. They couldn't cook. They couldn't do anything in the premises. And uh, it, they went about 10 days. Is that an unreasonable time for a, a landlord to make repairs without having heat in your apartment, without being able to cook in the apartment? I mean, it just didn't seem right that she and all the other tenants in this apartment complex were told, well, just, you know, find something yourself, you know, go to the McDonald's. But is that is that the way it works or not? Well, the repair statute breaks them down into two kinds of repairs, the ordinary repair and then the repair that uh, is a material condition affecting the uh, physical health or safety of a tenant. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so... Good. You have a you have a, a, a seven day clock on on conditions that affect the safety or health of a tenant. On the other one, your clock uh, is much more relaxed. All right. Hey, I want, <clears throat> Michael. Thank you for uh, all that information. I really appreciate that. Um, I know that a lot of our guests were really concerned because I think everybody's been a landlord or a tenant at one time, particularly more of a tenant. So that really helps us understand the landlord-tenant law. I think one of the most important takeaways is that the Texas Property Code does provide statutory remedies, so if you don't have a lease, you can resort to that. Also, if you need an attorney, any landlord-tenant needs, Michael, Michael Bolts, call Michael. What's your phone number again, Michael? <laughs> uh, Lightning Bolts. Lightning Bolts, <laughs> swift justice. Yay, good, good. 832-381-3070. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Michael, for being the thank guest you, on Bruce. The Legal thank Fix. Uh, thank you, G.I. Jerome. Thank you, Boy Wonder. And uh, if you have any...
tough legal questions, you can call the tough law firm or you can call the legal fix. Thank the you. Legal fix. <laughs> the legal fix.